I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard, and this is Mystery Teachings. Could we be living inside a hologram? What really is a hologram anyhow? Let's explore both the physics and metaphysics of holographic being and what that means for us. First of all, what is a hologram? We've all seen that shiny image of a dove on the back of a Visa credit card, or the hologram trading cards of our favorite superheroes when we were kids. These are two-dimensional films that have three-dimensional information encoded in them. And when light shines on them in the right way, we can see the image as if it is three-dimensional. The word itself gives us insight into what a hologram is. It comes from the ancient Greek words holos and gramma. Holos means whole, while gramma means that which is drawn or written, as in a picture, a drawing, an alphabetical letter, or a piece of writing that contains a message. Thus, a hologram is an image or a message that depicts the whole. Now, there are two main defining features of a hologram. First, every part contains the same pattern or information as the whole. If we break off a piece of a holographic plate and then shine light onto just that fragment, it will still contain the whole image. In this regard, it is fractal-like or recursive, meaning it doesn't matter how small of a scale we go to, it will still contain the whole pattern within each piece. A large amount of information is contained in a hologram. The second defining feature is that a hologram is a projection from a lower dimensional encoding of information about a higher dimensional reality. An easy way to think about this is what happens when we go to the movie theater. The movie we see on the screen is a projection from light shining through the film in the movie reel. That film is imprinted with images and information from the studio recordings of real people acting out their parts. The real people are three-dimensional in this case, but the film is two-dimensional. And we watch that movie being projected onto a two-dimensional screen as well. So this example is not holographic, but it gives us an idea of what is meant by a projection from a lower dimensional encoding of information about a higher dimensional reality. If the movie were recorded using holographic methods, our experience of watching the movie might be more like what's depicted in perhaps the holodeck of Star Trek. We often hear talk of raising up to higher dimensions. What is meant by dimension? Let's define this word so that we can be clear about what we mean. Dimensions, the way we usually relate to them in science, mean coordinates within space-time that measure height, width, depth, duration, and so forth. A single reference point is zero-dimensional. Let's call that the origin. Two points define a line or direction, creating one dimension. Two lines at perpendicular directions form a flat plane, giving us two dimensions. And three perpendicular lines create three dimensions, and so on. We can continue doing this to get higher and higher dimensions beyond our 3D world. For example, here is what is called a hypercube or tesseract, which is a four-dimensional version of a cube. But in that four-dimensional reality, it is also constantly moving or unfolding and unfolding. We can also look at a torus, which is a four-dimensional sphere or cylinder, depending on how it's formed. This shape of the torus is found all over nature. Anytime there's a magnetic field flowing between two poles, it takes on the form of a torus. This includes the energy field around galaxies, stars, planets, even us. It is the shape and dynamic flow of our aura. Current string theories propose that there is up to 10 or 11 spatial dimensions plus time. However, since our senses and perceptions are only trained to be aware of three dimensions, most of us do not see the full form of anything from a higher dimension. At best, we can see a slice or projection of it in our 3D experience, kind of like a shadow. We can easily grasp this idea when we look at a three-dimensional object and compare it to its different projections onto 2D planes, such as a cylinder that can be seen as either a rectangle or a circle depending on which two-dimensional perspective we are viewing it from. A four-dimensional tesseract projected into our 3D awareness could look like any of these images, among others, depending on the perspective and its current confirmation. Most mandalas from either Eastern or Western spiritual traditions 
are also two-dimensional projections of 3D or higher dimensional forms. One way to use this is to visualize geometries of different dimensions. For example, we could start by visualizing ourselves at the center or somewhere inside of us is the origin point. Then from that center, a line extends out. Let's say it goes out about nine feet. If we then rotate this line clockwise around us, it forms a two-dimensional circle and the line being the radius. If we rotate the circle again, only this time around the axis of its radius, then it will create a sphere. Finally, we can fold that sphere inward upon itself down through our central core to make a torus. Then feel or see that movement around us as well as through our central core. This is a really good way to train our mind and expand our awareness to consciously work with the sacred geometries that are already a part of us. As we do, we become more aware of what is happening in our energy field, and we also become more multidimensional in our consciousness. So raising up to higher dimensions would be to become consciously aware of this multidimensional reality around us. However, some people also use this phrase in relation to shifting to higher frequency levels, which is different than dimension. Now with this dimensional awareness in mind, the next question we want to explore is how do holograms really work? It begins with a coherent source of energy. It could be laser light or sound or some other type of coherent energy wave. This is directed to a dividing mirror that then splits the light into two paths. One path sends that light straight through and the other path sends that light towards an object. That object is then illuminated and the light scatters back off of it, some of which then recombines with the light that went straight through the mirror. As these two light streams recombine, they form what is called an interference pattern. This interference pattern is then imprinted or encoded onto a holographic film, which captures like a snapshot or a moment in time of the object, much like taking a selfie or a picture. Now, when some other light source shines onto that holographic film, that light then reflects off of it, carrying the information of the holographic pattern. Those light waves travel to our eyes, which detect these signals of information communicating that to our brain, and then the brain renders the three-dimensional-like image that we perceive before us. As Buckminster Fuller put it, everything we see is inside our own heads. It's similar to how we see rainbows. The rainbow is not out there. The rainbow is in here. And as Leonardo da Vinci said, all our knowledge has its origin in our perceptions. Now hold on, let's back up here for a second. Obviously our experience of this world is not like 3D, it is 3D and it feels very real. We can touch it, taste it, hear it, smell it, see it. We feel the pain and pleasures from it. So how can this be a hologram? Well, let's apply the same model, but now let's take it up to a higher dimension. Remember in Star Wars where R2-D2 projects a three-dimensional hologram movie of Princess Leia? Or as mentioned before, we could also think of the holodeck experience in Star Trek. What if there were some kind of holographic substrate similar to this that was being projected into our universe? The kind that could record in time and space and then project that into an actual 3D experience. And what if we could also have a multi-sensory interaction with it, like we can now do in some of our virtual reality games? I went to one of these experiences called The Void with the Star Wars theme, and I was rather impressed by how realistic it felt. It was interactive, it even had temperature changes, smells, and a vest that gave me a little zap in the ribs every time I got shot by a stormtrooper. I even yelped every time I got zapped. And we really felt like we were in the Star Wars experience. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't like the Matrix movies or Ready Player One, but our technologies are really coming along. Anyhow, what if true reality is a four-dimensional or five-dimensional or even higher dimensional realm? And what we experience here is just a three-dimensional holographic projection. 
We don't need all the fancy virtual reality gear to have a sensory experience of it. All that would be needed is to send the right signals and information into our brain to stimulate those perceptions. Much like what happens in our dreams, dreams feel very real when we are in them, even though we experience things that would be impossible in our waking life. In a similar way, our physical experience of life feels very real, and at some level it is, but it's not the whole reality. Our five physical senses are only attuned to the three-dimensional world, and even then we only perceive a small fraction of the information available in the physical world. We cannot rely on just our physical senses to inform us of what true reality is. Most people only perceive about one octave of the electromagnetic spectrum that we call visible light, ranging from red to violet in color. But we know from science that there are many more wavelengths of electromagnetic energy flowing all around us all the time. The same goes for our other senses. Each of them detect only a small portion of the energy spectra around us. And what's more, most people aren't even paying attention to what's going on around them. Their senses might be picking up the signals, but they are tuned out and not aware of what's happening, thus relying on subconscious mind to process all that information coming in. Unfortunately, our subconscious mind is full of all kinds of distortions and faulty programming that blocks or skews our perceptions. The subconscious then influences our ego and causes us to perceive separation between ourselves and others. This perception of separation is definitely an illusion. Such lack of awareness is a major thing we need to train ourselves out of. It starts by paying attention and not making assumptions. We must train ourselves to really look and tune in to what is happening around us. We must become consciously aware of our environment and ourselves if we want to achieve inner mastery. Then to start perceiving the higher dimensional realities, we also need to train our intuitive senses or extrasensory perception abilities. First, we become aware of subtle details that we might ordinarily ignore. The more we do this through repetition, the more we help our brain to rewire so that we can become better at perceiving subtle energies. The more we are aware of our energy field and train our ESP, or what we call our spiritual senses, we can then link this with our five physical senses. The more we do this, the more we can become like Superman or Lucy with X-ray vision, keen hearing, and access to higher consciousness. Only from higher consciousness can we move beyond perceiving just the hologram. Like in the Matrix movies, when they get out of the Matrix into Zion, they are able to see the Matrix for what it really is, from the encoding level. And from that level of awareness, we can learn to harness the matrix to become more at cause rather than always at the effect. Is this just science fiction? Could it be science fact? And where does consciousness fit into all of this? Whether or not it is true still remains to be seen, but there are many fascinating questions that this holographic model brings up. Our task in this hologram is to become more pure and complete image or expression of the whole. Join me again as we discover how to access the quantum gap and the infinite potential contained within the zero point field or quantum C. I'm Dr. Teresa Bullard. Thank you for exploring the mysteries of the universe with me in this episode of Mystery Teachings.